The perfect square, the short row mitered square. Now you can loom knit a custom mitered square in any size. Just choose your loom and yarn, one or two colors, and you're on your way. Let's make a square today. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. Whether you plan to make one square for a washcloth and to include in a spa set, a bunch of squares to seam into a blanket, or one huge square for a baby blanket that's nice and cozy, you can use the same pattern for all of them. In fact, I'm going to show you how to slip the stitch and make a nice pretty finished one that you can use for a baby blanket today, but if you want to make one that you can seam together, you can choose not to use a slip stitch, and I will have both in my pattern, so it's a two for one. If you click down in the link in the description below, you will get a link to our blog, which has both patterns listed, or you can download a uh, ad-free version, if you like, from our Rowery and Etsy stores, and that will include both patterns in there as well. And look at this fun guy. Now, this isn't today, but look, you can even do things like this, a nice cool stripe and play with it. That's a little bit different technique, and that would be in an upcoming video if you guys like, so be sure and write striped miter if that's something that you want to see. And let's go into what supplies you need today. Be sure and get the pattern and down here in materials we want to reiterate that you can use any loom gauge so you want to use any yarn that's appropriate sized for the loom that you choose. We happen to be using the new Knitting Board Flexi Loom Skinny, which is a small gauge or SG 3 8 loom. You can use the Knitting Board All-in-One, um, you can use a small gauge Kiss Loom, whatever you wanna do, it doesn't matter. Just make sure the yarn is appropriate. And we happen to use uh, Red Heart Chic Sheep Medium Weight 4, and uh, you just need two colors for the, of course, the two color design or one color for the solid. Today's loom that I'm using happens to be of course the 3 8 flexi loom you can use any one you want but I do want to explain it because you will see it in my video it does flex and move <laughs> I know your mind is amazed if you haven't seen one yet it's all the rage right now and I am going to be using 19 of these links you can get it in this box but these are the remaining links that are on there and I got to tell you I really enjoyed being able to just use the front ones but then keep them snapped together um, with the whole loom so you'll see me using this entire thing kind of in the background because when I had it propped on my lap um, I could just kind of put it on my belly and just work away and just go back and forth on these and kind of move it as I need to so uh, it worked really well uh, this is not just a plug for this but I will be doing a review at some point and uh, be sure and watch out for that but if you do want one be sure and click down in the link below and if you do want to try it in a larger gauge with a larger yarn there's also the chunk size for the thicker or yarn like um, of number five or six weight yarn uh, this one you can use a, a three or four weight yarn all right so the other supplies you need is a crochet hook if you want to do the chain cast on which I recommend because it has the best uh, edging for that you'll need a tapestry needle and your scissors and of course your loom hook all right let's begin we do have timestamps in this video, so if you click down in the description, you can jump directly to where you need in this video. There's also something called video chapters. If you use your finger or mouse along the bottom of the video, you can fast forward to the section that you need, and it'll have little titles pop up. So that's a great way to jump exactly where you need. Okay, let's go over here. Uh, abbreviations, we're knitting or purling. I'm using the unit stitch. You can use the true knit or e-wrap, either one, and we're purling. If you choose to slip the stitch, on the very first uh, instructions over here we have uh, slipping the stitch edge and then you've got the one without the slip stitch edge okay and then we're wrapping for our um, for our short row so we're gonna be working uh, all the way across and then we come back in a purl we knit across and then we stop short um, and wrap one and go back and then when we come back we're wrapping the one next to the wrap one and we're just not working the end here so an individual uh, wrap is happening there's no German short row there's no lifting up of the uh, existing stitch and wrapping it's just gonna be super easy wraps on top very fast 
fast. So uh, the short row, there's more details on here about it, but we're going to show you uh, in the video how to do it. You can do a two color design. I've got the uh, information right in the pattern for you. And then uh, down here on size, this is the part that most people are going to want. You can take a screenshot of that if you need to uh, for your personal benefit. Just don't share this with everybody else. I ask that you just share the link to the video or the link to the pattern on our blog. Thank you so much for honoring that. And I'm going to be working with the small gauge. Sorry, it keeps jumping. Uh, the loom gauge here is listed, whichever loom that you're using. This is the center to center measurement in fractions. So the small gauge is a 3 8 measurement that I'm using. And to get a four inch square, I used 20 stitches. To get an eight inch square, I used 38 stitches. And uh, a 12 inch square, it's recommending 48 to 60. And of course you can see these generic ranges in here as well. Um, those will work for you. It just, it just depends on your particular tension like how tight you um, work your knit stitches and purl stitches uh, in order to get those and the yarn that you're using and of course the gauge of the loom that you're using so there is uh, a little bit of a range in here and then of course if you're using the regular gauge large gauge or extra large gauge with those uh, different yarn choices okay all right um, so let's jump into the pattern we're gonna go all the way down here and you're gonna cast on the number of stitches that you want uh, I'm gonna use um, 20 in my sample, but I did uh, 38 in the main sample that I got an eight inch by eight inch piece. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. And I'll refer to these directions off to the side. We will have a right and a left-handed video for you. So click down below if you need uh, whichever one you're not seeing here. We're going to chain cast on and I get this nice clean edge. Uh, with the slip stitch edge, you get this slip stitch on this side and on this side over here. And then you can see this is the bind off edge. So it looks really great. We're going to go in one direction for the cast on and begin with peg one over here. You can use the uh, true uh, cable cast on going in this direction or the double E wrap cast on. But of course this one looks the best with the slip stitch edge. And if you need one where you have to go down and come back, just make sure that you land for peg one here. So let's begin by making a slip knot wrap my yarn around my finger twice, put the back loop over the front a little bit, and do it one more time to make a slip knot. Put it on your crochet hook. If you have a larger gauge uh, loom and yarn, you can probably do this with your fingers. Uh, I'm just going to put um, uh, it out there that we've got a link down below to cast on with a chain in a slower video. So I'm just gonna go a little bit fast, especially if you've already done it before. We put the yarn between the peg we want to put the first stitch on and the peg that we won't be using because we're going to go in this direction. So we're just going to go around and put the um, hook between the uh, next peg and the one we're on. I'm going to wrap the yarn around. Okay, let me come to the inside and we're going to pull it through this slip knot here. Make sure that your slip knot is nice and loose. Pull it through and then move on to behind the next peg. We're going to yarn over and pull through and continue on down the line. So you're gonna cast on as many uh, pegs as you want. It can be an odd or even number, it doesn't matter. Pause your video and come back when you get to the last peg and we'll begin on row one. And in order to uh, end casting on, you're just going to uh, put your uh, last loop onto that peg and that will be uh, peg one. All right, pause your video and I'll see you in a moment. I'm just gonna continue putting this on so you can see it in real time. And I am just doing um, 20 stitches for my sample. It'll be a four by four, but I did 38 for the, um, see me, I'm just pulling this off while I chat. <laughs> I did 38 stitches to cast on to make an eight by eight in this gauge. All right, and coming down to the end. And this is the last peg. Place that stitch on there. All right, let's begin on peg one for row one. Row one, we're going to slip the first stitch. Okay, so we just don't work it. And if you are going to do the non-slip version, you're going to knit that stitch. So you just come around and knit that stitch and then continue on. So I'm going to slip it for my slipped version. So just don't work the first one and then knit all of them and leave one peg remaining. So work all the way down to the end until one peg remains for row one. 
and we will work that wrap together. All right, pause your video and I'll meet you at the end. See you soon. We're on the last peg and you're simply just going to wrap around as if to knit and then bring the yarn forward and you're done. So that is the end of row one. Row two, you're simply going to purl until the last remaining stitch, okay? And then uh, pause your video and I'll meet you there for that. So just purling all stitches, leave one remaining and I will see you soon. Down at the end of the row, you're going to want to knit that stitch, okay? So we're knitting this stitch to keep the uh, slipped edge nice and clean. If you are working the non-slip version, you're going to purl that stitch and it will create a little bump on here for you and that's what you're using to sew it to the next, uh, the next panel, okay, or the next square. So I'm going to not talk about the slipped one after this, but whenever you begin the non-slip version, you're not just, just not going to slip that first stitch. You'll just knit it. And at the end of the purl row, you just purl that. So be sure and look at that version of the pattern down in the link below for the blog. And we won't be um, talking about that from now on. Now we're going to begin the next row by um, slipping that stitch and we're going to knit all the pegs up until one stitch before the wraps. So both, both versions, you're going to go all the way down to this peg here and we'll um, meet you back up to do this one. All right, pause your video and I'll see you there. At the end of row three, we're going to make another wrap and turn. So wrap around and put your yarn at the front to use the purl stitch on the remainder of row four. So row four, we just um, turned. Again, we're not working any of these wrap stitches we just purl all the way until the end and if you're doing a slip stitch edge of course you're going to knit this stitch so complete row four pause your video meet me back for row five see you soon okay you have completed rows one through four and now let's talk about rows five and six i'm going to get my instructions so rows five and six you're just going to slip knit to one stitch before the wrap peg and then wrap it and then row six, purl to the last stitch and knit one. Okay, so again, if you're not doing this slipped, you're just knitting to one stitch before the wrap peg, wrap one, and then row six, just purl all stitches. So you're going to repeat rows five through six until all except the first two stitches are wrapped. So we'll come back when you only have two pegs left. So when you have these last two pegs without double wraps and everything else has two, we will be there. All right, pause your video and I'll see you at that point. All right, so you've got all of your stitches worked. You've got uh, two more pegs left that do not have wraps. For row seven, all we need to do is slip this stitch and wrap the second one. Row eight is simply knitting this next stitch, the very last peg, okay? And if you're doing the one color design, you will continue on using this same yarn. If you're doing the two color design, whether it's the slipped version or the non-slip version, you will be changing your, um, your yarn mid row. So row nine is going to be um, either slip one or knit one. So if you're doing the knit version on all stitches, then this is gonna be knit and it will be in the same color. But because we're slipping it and I'm gonna change colors, I don't have to do anything with this one right now. So go ahead and knit this stitch if you're doing the, the non-slipped version. And let's grab our next yarn. This is color B. And now we are working in the middle of row nine because we've already skipped one, okay, the slip. Go ahead and put your tail towards the back and you can hold it against the working yarn. Okay, that's gonna come in handy here in a minute. And now you're going to wrap around peg two with your working yarn, wrap around, just as if you're going to wrap it normally, go all the way around to the front, okay? So that is the remainder of row nine, just wrapping. Now row 10, you're going to uh, work that stitch. Okay, so we're going to knit that stitch. I'm just holding on to this one. You could put it in the back too. I'm just going to do it with my thumb and then bring it to the back to give it the rest of that slack. Okay, so I've worked this stitch and now we're on row, um, we just did 10, which is working that stitch, and then now we're on 11. Okay, then we're going to, uh, and I'm, I'm still holding on to these over here, that's fine. Now we're going to wrap this um, second stitch, the second peg, and we're going to knit all of these stitches over. One, 
two, and three. So three over one. And then you want to uh, start working your way uh, increasing slowly by one stitch. So after you've uh, knit over all three, you're going to wrap and turn and work your way back. Okay, so the ending of that row 11 is uh, wrap. Okay, so we're slipping, knitting the stitch right before the, um, the two doubles, and then we're adding a third. Okay, the double wraps, and then we're adding a third. And then now we want to do a purl row. So we're going to purl. This is row 12. This is purl one. And then knit one. And go ahead and hold these tails back here still. Okay, now I don't really need to hold these tails anymore. I just needed all that extra tension now, and we can continue on with our pattern. So uh, the next row is going to be um, row 13. You're going to slip one, and then you're going to knit until all the pegs up to and including the uh, double wrapped peg. Okay, so there's two wraps on here. So see, this is one wrap, two wrap, and then that's that stitch uh, below, okay? And then now we're going to uh, wrap this one and then come back, okay? So now we're going to be purling until one stitch from the end and then knit that one. So knit the very last stitch. Okay, and so uh, you're at row 15 and 16. So row 15 and 16 is where we're repeating. You're going to uh, knit all the way up to and including the one that has the extra wraps on it. Okay, so where you've got three loops down below and then you're gonna wrap the very next one and make sure that it has three. And then turn, purl, all the way back to one stitch remains and then knit that stitch. That's it. So rows 15 and 16 continue repeating until you get down to the very end. So continue that, go down to this end, and when you have three loops on this uh, next to last peg and you have two loops on this peg, I will meet you there. Pause your video and we'll see you soon. All right, so we are coming to the row 18 where we have worked our slip one and knit all the way until we have uh, this second to last stitch that has three loops and the very last stitch has two loops. We are knitting all because this is slip one, knit all, and all loops will have one peg. So go ahead and do that. Okay. And then row 19 is your last row. You are going to um, purl all stitches and then knit one. So we're just going to go back here and purl all the way to the end and knit one. And then you will just um, bind off and I'll show you uh, how to begin and end that bind off here in a moment. So go ahead and do that. Pause your video and I will see you there. You've completed row 19. Go ahead and look at the back here. And I suggest going ahead and hand blocking while it's still on your loom. I just go ahead and pull out uh, and stretch out my yarn a little bit. And we'll stretch it when it's off of the loom as well. But I kind of like having it on here. It gives it a little bit more tension for me. And then go ahead and stretch this part out as well. Because unless you're using a uh, kiss loom, uh, the stitches tend to be a lot more uh, tight. Uh, because they are uh, stretched out more on the knitting loom and uh, the kiss looms have a more consistent uh, kind of knit and also it depends on your yarn. I just know on mine I needed to uh, make sure and mine was nice and um, uh, stretched out a little bit and I'll show you what this looks like when it comes off of the the uh, the loom. So uh, we're going to bind off. This is a standard bind off. However, if you are uh, working a bind off, normally you knit the first two stitches and then do your, your pattern uh, of binding off. But uh, on the slipped version, I go ahead and slip that very first stitch. So I don't actually knit that first one and I just start by uh, knitting the second peg, moving it over to the first and then knitting off the first uh, peg, moving it over to the second and then uh, now we begin that pattern again. So you just knit the next peg, the second peg, move it over to the first, lift up and over, 
and then move it to the empty peg and you continue all the way down. Now, when you uh, work up to the last two stitches, uh, pause your video and meet me there because you have one very specific thing you need to do that you normally would not do. So go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll meet you at the end here. Uh, it's very important for this pattern. I just wanna show you what it looks like on here. It's not that hard, you just need to know what to do. All right, pause your video and I will see you at the end. All right, we're on the last two stitches. Go ahead and cut that other yarn if you didn't earlier. And we want to uh, go ahead and knit the very last stitch and lift it up and over, move it over to the peg before and knit off. Okay, now this is where we want to um, go ahead and cut our yarn. Okay, make a tail. And then we're going to take our original tail, our beginning tail, with our tail right now and take those and we're going to work in the opposite direction like we're going to knit this stitch just using both of them at the same time so lifting up and over one stitch over those two lift up and over and then pull both of them all the way through just like this okay and you take it off of the loom you can see it's a little bit pointy don't worry that will be fixed in a moment but when i pull on this you can see it's a nice clean ending here and it matches all the way down and then here's where my other two cut tails are okay so now we want to hand stretch and block this out so I'm just going to take this other end here where we had bound off just kind of tug on it it's just stretched out from being on the loom and then uh, I would encourage you to wet block this you can also steam block it. I think wet blocking is the best thing. Uh, so there is a video for how to wet block down in my uh, description down below. Just look for uh, that wet blocking technique video. You're basically going to um, wash it with some mild detergent. Um, you can let it, it's not really washing, you're just letting it soak. I actually would let it soak for about 15 minutes till all the little bubbles come out and then you just wring it out um, till it's damp. Put it on your blocking board and pin it out uh, to be your square and then it'll actually uh, end up making itself uh, even into a square. This is getting more and more square-like, um, so this part is gonna have to get stretched here and then this part here, um, but it actually does square up very nicely, just like this one over here, okay? So um, yeah, you can make multiple ones and uh, put them together uh, with or without the uh, slips. And now you know how to do it. Well, I hope you enjoyed making your short row miter and stay tuned for another miter coming up, a traditional one. We also have a mock miter down at the link below for that one. We will also be having a tutorial on making a knit sweater on the Dinning Loom as well. So be sure and subscribe if you aren't already and get our newsletter at our goodknitkisses.com website as well. We'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us today, where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.